the word eco-epidemiology has been defined in many ways, but it, it, you can think of it as using some principles and methodology of ecology, of the science of ecology, to inform studies in epidemiology. And also to work at this interface between the natural cycle, then how things are work in, nat work in, the, in nature, uh, especially for vector-borne zoonotic diseases with epidemiological studies. So really working at this interface. And tick-borne diseases are great to do this because uh, there is certainly a lot to do in terms of the natural transmission of the pathogen. And then from the human side, you can look at things like human, the way humans live and their behaviors, which influence their, their exposure risk. And in Thing, it has been found, for example, that tick-borne diseases have increased with suburbanization because the fragmentation of the landscape increases the potential for deer and mice to be in that area, so there's more ticks and people come into contact with ticks more often. So really land use has been important. Then also changes in, in the land use, in the climate, have, we think there might be also having some effect in the activity of the ticks that influence transmission. So this is basically what we're trying to do. We're really trying to understand from you know, from the ecological point of view and from the human health point of view, put all those all thing, those things together to understand human risk and human outcomes. And, and the, we're looking at the um, the whole transmission cycle. So we ask questions like, what are the the what's the capacity of the different hosts to transmit Lyme disease, the Borrelia versus Babesia? And what are the important hosts? So this is really relevant because, for example, if birds are not able to transmit a Babesia, for example, this may be the reason why it's not expanding as fast. The birds move very fast and move Borrelia fast. But eventually, you know, that would mean that if, if there's a potential for Babesia to get to all those places where Lyme disease is. It will just take it a, lo a longer time to do, such, to do so. Another option is that Babesia is not transmitted as efficiently even in mice. So even when it gets to a place, it's just never as prevalent as Lyme disease. So those two things are, are two different um, consequences um, of, the, of the different transmission cycle. Um, so so the, the study will basically put together information from the field, from these field studies. Then we also have uh, information from lab studies, which I do in collaboration with Durland Fish, where we s simulate the transmission cycle in the lab with natural hosts and ticks. And all of this information will go into models that can model the transmission and determine to what extent you know, Babesia and Borrelia are different in terms of their ability to be transmitted. And so we drag a cloth in the field, a corduroy cloth, and then we, the ticks attach to it and we pick them up, put them in a tube, and uh, we take them to the lab and we analyze them. We test them for Borrelia babesia, different genotypes of Borrelia. And the idea is that this is simulating really a person walking through the forest. So it really simulates human risk of exposure to these diseases. And so then we use that information to map out the distribution. And then we're going to try to understand looking environmental factors that determine the distribution of these organisms in space. And then we'll kind of zoom into certain areas. And we're going to trap hosts next year. So we're going to select areas where Babesia is really well established and areas where Babesia is just starting to invade. And we're going to sample uh, mice and chipmunks. So we're going to put traps and collect those animals and count the ticks on them and look at whether they're infected or not and really put together a story as to whether what, how abundant the hosts are, how abundant the ticks are, and then all of that will feed into this model of transmission. The next step, which we're kind of we're doing as we go as well, it's not specifically in, in the grant per se, but is to understand how that links up with human uh, outcomes with disease. And so when then the beauty of this almost is that the ticks, you know, you can just look at the ticks and say 20% are infected with Borrelia, let's say, and 10% are infected with Babesia. So you should expect, you know twice the number of cases, uh, human cases, of Borrelia than Babesia, because it's the same way in which humans are infected, by the same ticks, in the same kind of environment. So you kind of can separate you know, human behavior and all the other factors that are important and we're also interested in. But in terms of the proportion of cases you expect, you have a clear expectation. And so next we're going to try start looking at humans, and hopefully we'll start some serological studies, and see, and we can determine whether you know, we see as many cases of Babesius as we expect, or we can you know, estimate whether there is underreporting of Babesius.